getting you to where you need to go to. They're not like, oh my God, this is like, nobody's appalled by that. Yet, the Fortune 500 Madison Avenue ecosystem thinks they are. They don't have have luggage when it comes to corporate brand strategy. It is true. And we we do fight against that a little bit too. So you're inspiring me to to break out from all of that. And, And it is a constant struggle. There's a lot of people who weigh in to what we do. Um, you know, if you stick, stay to the creativity and really talking like a human to other humans, then I think you would realize that you don't talk the same way to everybody that you're talking to. Of course, that's not how we are as people. So why should your brand be like that too? So this is, hey, this is good for me. I have to have these moments to speak to people on the outside to, to get me to thinking fresh for the future. Oh, see, you're wearing purple too. You, you are, man, you're fast. Cause I go fast. I was literally about to say, I'm such an idiot. Look at this. We're like so matching now. All right. Let's talk about audio because yeah. I think, I think um, people are in their ca- cars. So there's like, I, I love audio advertising for automotive on podcast, which is eating up an incredible amount of consumption of audio in car. Yep. Because I always think like, oh, you're pissed at your car right now. It doesn't smell as good as it used to. If something just happened, like you just looked out the window and we're envious. It feels incredibly exciting to me. Podcast audio is huge. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've, we dip into, well, actually we love radio. We use it a lot um, for drive time. Uh, we use, we call it terrestrial radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're moving into areas like Spotify, which we did um, a, a sponsorship or partnership with them the last this last year to launch our Elantra, um, where we did a podcast. There was video too, mm. but we partnered with Interscope Artist and it was called Un, um, Unlock My City. And basically they were driving around their city talking about the things that they love. So it was a podcast, but then we did do a couple that were video just to help show more of the sheet metal because yep. that's what cars are all about. But it's still great content to draw audiences in. And we know that audio is so big with you know very loyal audiences that love to plug in and listen. Um, and with the pandemic, this was a, a huge, it took a huge spike. So that Spotify was the first time we stepped in with them. We loved it, it was hugely successful. We'll do more of that. We we love the idea of podcasts and just radio and audio in general. Anything you're kind of taking a scrutiny with, you know, like just like maybe rethinking that, you know, you've been in the game for a while, you know, it, it's not about razzing print or Facebook or Snapchat or direct mail. It just, I think I want to educate on these shows. Is there anything that you are saying to yourself, you know? I'll tell you a big one that was a big decision for us was we are not going to be in Super Bowl this year. And we were in for 13 years. So um, we did Super Bowl for 13 years and never debated the Hyundai Sunday thing when the biggest thing in the world is on a Sunday. I know. Well, I'm I'm pissed now. I'll see you later. I'm upset. You know, sometimes it takes (laughs) a a genius. Go ahead. Uh, So yeah, that was a huge decision. It It was a huge decision. It was because it's a lot of money. We still love it. We we're still very tied to football, but you know, for one day, which we had an incredible spot last year, our Smart Pac. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a lot of play on that. We still love it. But, you know, we need to extend, I think, a big Super Bowl day for many more days. Um, so it kind of spikes on that one day and then it kind of trails off. We need to kind of expand that a little bit. And so we're excited about what's going to come this year. But that was a major decision for us because we've been so tied to it. A lot of people were surprised. Um you know, it felt a little good to loosen it up a little bit. We feel like so much pressure to have like an award-winning sure, sure. spot every year, but that still needs to come through I mean, creatively with the creative. It can't be any less than a big Super Bowl idea. Well, listen, we've got to run, but I got more stuff. We'll, we'll purple it up another time. We'll purple it up. It was great to see you. Good to see you. Continue Take success. Care. Next up, John Rulin is the leading authority in maximizing customer loyalty through radical generosity. He is the founder and author of Giftology, a system of using generosity to build relationships with new clients and generate thousands of referrals through empathy and kindness. He works hand in hand with organizations from UBS to the Chicago Cubs. Welcome, John. Hey, Gary, how are you? Good, John. My best friend, Brandon Warnick, he's going to be thrilled when he rewatches this because he is a big Cubs fan. So thanks for helping out there, John. Uh, actually, I think, you know, unlike most of the brands that have been on here, give us the one minute spiel on exactly what you do, because I think that will help people. And then what I'd like to think about is the framework of gifting and what the media platforms are that give it some power to be able to do some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I grew up in Ohio. I'm a farm boy, uh, goat milk and farm kid from Ohio. 
And uh, I thought I was gonna go be a doctor to get out of Dodge. I grew up in a town of 400 people, but uh, I had a mentor uh, early on when I was 20, who was radically generous and built these amazing relationships and was kind of a referral machine. And I realized that uh, he, you know, in any business, it's all about relationships. Whether you're one person or a you know, 10,000 person company, everything rises and falls on employee and client relationships. And so I realized nobody was teaching people how to be generous and to do it strategically. Most people would, you know, here's an Amazon gift card, here's a bottle of wine, here's a whatever. And so I dropped out of med school and started an agency. And uh, about five years ago, I wrote a book called Giftology. We're the only one in the space. Everybody else sends stuff, uh, but we're teaching people how to use gratitude and generosity and empathy really as a year-round thoughtful thing to do, not just to check the box at the Christmas time. Uh, like a lot Go of figure. People. Go figure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the channels, you know, yeah. like what should brands or startups or, um, you know, entrepreneurs here be thinking about what should they know about which media outlets give them a better chance to execute the thesis? Yeah. Well, I, I think that uh, our, we're, we're getting a lot of inbound of people reaching out, wanting to engage. You are talking about influencer marketing and different things. And um, I think a lot of people, you know, they do things very generic and very vanilla, whether they're launching a book and sending out, you know, 500 copies in vanilla envelopes or whether they're, you know, uh, trying to get on podcasts or whatever else. And so I think that the focus for us has been going into, and I, I heard somebody else mention this earlier on, it's human to human, it's one to one. And I think that a lot of people have done too much stuff that's to the masses. And I think that, you know, 2020 with the pandemic, I think people have realized that, hey, these are human beings that you're dealing with. And I think that a lot of people haven't realized until now, until everybody's at home and kids are running in and dogs and whatever else that like, oh my gosh, they're a human being outside of whatever channel they're in. And so I, I'm seeing a lot more people reaching out wanting to, uh, you know, like the, the traditional ways of building relationships, whether that's with mass media or whether that's at conferences or dinners, like the traditional ways have been blown up. And so people are, are struggling. How do I build connections from afar? I think a lot of people took for granted, like I'm, I'm going to be able to go to CES or the Super Bowl or whatever else. All of those uh, building a relationship or engaging people is completely gone. And so uh, we're seeing a lot more people that are doubling down on how can I take you know, my top 2% or my top 1%. And similar to what you did with, I think you're talking about Taylor Swift. She can't show up at every wedding, but she can show up at one wedding. And you did it with the Jersey. Uh, you know, a guy spends $300 on wine or champagne yep. or whatever, and you show up with a Jersey. That becomes a ripple effect that's that, you know, people are, it's, it's a story worth talking about, whether it's on Snapchat or Instagram, and you're seeing brands that are getting wise to leverage and say, hey, I can't, may not be able to do it for everybody, but let's pick 10 people and go all in on those people. I mean, and you know this, I mean, after Crush It, which looks smarter and smarter these days, the next book I wanted to write was The Thank You Economy. I wrote that in 2010, you know, I mean, I believe in this, it's in my religion. I don't even understand how people, I can't believe that pe people are, Oh, 2021, like we should do, how this is progressive thinking in 2021 makes me want to rip my eyeballs out and jump out this window. Me too. I, I mean, I've been talking about for 20 years in a different vein than you have on social media. It's more like, you know, if, if a relationship matters, how you show up for them in the Valley, especially in a pandemic, is the time to double down on generosity. It's the time to show up and be extra bold with people. How, John, do you, do you agree that, I apologize, do you agree a lot of people fuck this up because they want the tactic for their business and so because their intent is grounded in that, it kind of smear, like, I think the reason this is such a challenging concept is that you have to have this incredible kind of like separation of the short term and the long term. I think what works for me, John, is I do all this kind of stuff all day long because I think in 67 year terms and when people try to replicate it and I watch them or when clients fuck up the stuff that I want them to do, it's because they care about the 67 minutes or days, not the 67 years. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I tell people all the time, the long game is decades, not days. And if you do do something nice for somebody and then ask for the referral or ask for the, the opening door or do whatever, that's not a gift. That's a manipulation. That's a bait and switch. Correct. And so people, people can tell. I tell people all the time, like, if you have the wrong energy when you're doing something for somebody, 
then even reading between the lines, you can tell when somebody does something or they do almost go too far. And then when it, it, like you can tell that you're being bribed, that, like there's a difference between being thoughtful and Gary, bribed. Gary, I'm gonna do you a huge favor. I'm gonna pick you up at the airport and take you to your hotel, but it, that's grounded in, hey, I need to pitch you my business, bro. So like, you know, they're, they're like, I'm gonna help you buy the jets if you give me a million dollars to start this company. P, you know, I, and then the biggest one, John, I don't know if this has ever crossed, how this crosses over in your world. This gets into a very deep feeling I have around people who say, I always get walked all over. And I talk to a lot of these people and I say, are you getting walked all over? Or were you giving as a manipulation tack? Because giving, is giving on the other person's terms, not on yours. And I see a lot of people crying, Gary, I don't like being nice, I'm always walked all over. And I, I'm a weird guy, I go deep with them. You know, and I yeah. do this 20, 50 times a year, and 99% of the time, they weren't being sweet. They were trying to manipulate a situation by giving somebody something they didn't want because they wanted something in return. Thoughts? Yeah, well, it's like the book Give and Take. Uh, there's giving, taking, matching. Most people are matchers that want to, they want to be a giver but they're playing in the matching world of like tit for tat. I do this for you, then now you have to do this for me. And I think you've talked about it, like your jab, 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 right hook was, you give, 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 then you earn the right to maybe ask, but it doesn't, right. it does not give you the, like, like if you keep score and get pissed off, and I tell people all the time, like, I'll do things that like, we sent somebody a sauna as a gift. I didn't ask for anything. And it didn't pay off for literally years later, but it wasn't because I asked for anything. He was inspired. And I think there's a difference between, and I think that's where most people get with gifting. They're not really doing gifts. What they're doing is they're, it's a carrot and stick. It's a incentive. It's a reward. Correct. And when, whether it's for your spouse or whether it's for your biggest client or whether it's for an influencer, when you do things with the right intention it, and no strings attached and then show up again and then show up again and then show up again, you start building the social bank accounts like with your spouse. If you show up if, with a gift and then ask for something five minutes later, it wasn't a gift. You were trying to get something. It was a people, ticket. It was a cost was of a, entry. John, yeah. it's exactly right. John, I swear to God you're talking. You know what fires me up? I do a ton of this shit. I'm more excited when it doesn't pay out. It makes I'm, for a better story. It but, makes for a way. But you know this because, you know, I don't even tell. I just love it because it speaks to the merit of the truth of the intent. Well, if it worked every single time, then it wouldn't really be like we're emotional beings and what people don't understand. And that's why agencies or big companies sometimes have a hard time with like playing the long game of you're going to love on all these relationships and then not ask for anything. And they're like, well, what's the date on that? And I'm like, well, it could pay off this way or it could pay off 10 years from now. Are you, are you, you say you're playing the long game, but are you really willing to make deposits year, year after year, quarter after quarter in your employees, clients, suppliers? And the answer is most of them, they, they, they want to say that they're playing the game in decades, but really they're, they're playing it in quarters because they're a publicly traded company. And they're like, I got, if I do, if I go take my marketing budget and I slice off $5 million and go invest in all these people and it doesn't work, then my head rolls and I'm, I'm out of a job. And so most people are positioning themselves to play the safe thing and leveraging generosity with all these relationships is a weird concept and it's a freaky one, but it, but if everybody was really good at thoughtful it's, gift giving, the, it would work, it would just be it's, noise. It's the least weird, the least, you know, this is the most human. Be a fucking good person, funny shit happens. Go figure. I, I yeah. know. All right, brother, thanks for being on. Continued success. Hey, thanks for having me. Up next, we have Marissa Freeman, the Chief Brand Officer of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Marissa helped lead the historical split of HP into two separate entities. Today, Marissa leads HPE's experience marketing team, driving brand strategy, global events, sponsorships, advertising, media, and digital marketing. Welcome, Marissa. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hi, Gary. Hey, Marissa. How are you? Good. Being good. a good person, man. That's the Go thing. figure, right? Go figure. Go figure. It's what my mother always said. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Let's talk about media plan. You know, actually, why don't you quantify? Because HP comes in a lot of forms, so yeah. I want everybody to have good context. Talk to me about HPE, so people understand, it, and then I'll go into the combo. Thank you. So HP Hewlett Packard is 